Wow, God is so good. Tonight, we're going to talk about um, pursuit and how God pursues us. And I just was spending time with the Lord this afternoon and worshiping. And I just want to remind us, um, wow, and set our expectation that God really wants to speak a powerful word tonight of how he is pursuing each one of our hearts. Our hearts are so um, important and so valuable to God, and he is all about pursuing us, the goodness of the Lord running after us. We worshiped to that last night on Tuesday night at Growth Group, and it just was overwhelming to me. The goodness of the Lord is consistently pursuing us no matter what's going on, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, he is consistently coming after us, after our hearts with his goodness. So that's um, basically what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, We've been walking through the prophetic word that God gave us um, to start off this year because we really want to set the vision for what God has said, who we are here at Word Life Center. Um, We've been walking through our identity and what that looks like. And I just want to remind us of a couple things. Um, Prophetic words are given to call out our destinies. That's one of the reasons that God gives us a prophetic word is to say, this is who you are. Sometimes we say we're calling out the golden people. We're saying, this is who you are, and then we get this beautiful journey and process in walking that out. Um, He gives us prophetic words for vision and direction, and I talked about that before, um, that we know where we're going even as we are journeying in this process. Um, But one of the things I want to remind us of, too, is that there is this tension sometimes in the process and in the journey of where we are and where we know that we're going. And I want to encourage us that all, every step of every moment of every day as we're in this process and journey, the goodness of the Lord is pursuing us, pursuing our hearts, pursuing our minds, pursuing our lives. And so even as we're saying, oh, this is where we're going, but these are the good things that God is doing right now. He's doing amazing work in us and through us right now. Even though we have this word that, wow, it's going to be so amazing, it's actually amazing right now. The peace of the Lord is overwhelmingly amazing. The joy of the Lord is amazing. Salvation, that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, is overwhelmingly amazing. Healing is amazing and connection is amazing. So all of these things that God is doing, I want to encourage us, even as we're looking to the future, to keep in the forefront of our mind that God is doing amazing things in us and through us right now. Yeah, so thanks, Lord. Um, just a couple things. Just a reminder, too, our kingdom call, our call here at Word Life Center, really is a, a call that God has over all of his kingdom to restore the brokenhearted and set the captives free. And one of the ways he does that is in his pursuit. He is consistently pursuing us. And this is a call for us, but this is actually, Jesus quoted this. That's who he is. We get to be the hands and feet of Jesus as we pursue others, as we restore the brokenhearted, as we set captives free, and as we are getting um, restored stored and set free. Then just a reminder too, we've been talking about revelation and action go together. So we can know a lot, but we want to remember that we're actually putting it into practice. We're in this process and that God is doing a great, great work right now. So I'm going to invite up Teresa and Marcus again. They're going to join me up here. We're going to walk through, yeah, more of this prophetic word. Let's stay there for a moment. Check. And just a reminder too, if you have questions, Yay, we've been getting really good questions, so we're going to go through a couple of questions that people had. If you have them, please text me if you have my number. Again, you can email if you're online or you don't have my phone number. It's sandy at wordlc.com. You can always talk to me during the week. People have been asking questions during the week, too, so it's been really great. And I just champion those people that are asking questions, being really brave and bold. And, yeah, and I've gotten permission from the people that have been asking to be able to share um, these stories. Um, So one of the things that we talked about, Let's see if I can get it here. There we go. Um, Two weeks ago, you were bitter, and I have called you irresistible kindness. And one of the questions that came up 
um, was a scenario of someone, um, and we're just going to answer this, um, at work where they have changed so much from the inside out, but the people around them haven't yet recognized that. And it kind of looks like this. So um, this was a person who they were the one that people would go to if something needed to be done, but it needed to be done more in kind of a forceful way, like, oh, well, if you need to, them to get it done, then go to so-and-so because they're the ones going to tell them what to do. And so they had this reputation of a harshness. And um, actually, when people would pass them in the hallway, they would almost go like this, like, oh, no, here this person comes. I don't want them to tell me what for. And so this person is feeling like, I have changed from the inside out. How do I change that reputation? I am no longer bitter. I'm actually really irresistibly kind, but there are people still that, that aren't recognizing that. So what do we do? We can't force people to recognize it. So how do we deal with that? So first of all, I would like to say com uh, commend this person who has transformed and changed yes. their heart and their life so much that um, it's actually altering and bettering how you're interacting with people at your workplace. But it's really, um, that can feel like a really strange place and it's important that you don't feel stuck. So that's so good that you asked this question. Um, letting people know who are around you that you've changed is really great. And when we start with telling people, look, I am so sorry, the way I used to be must have sometimes felt stressful and hurtful. Would you please forgive me for being that way? I see that I was that way. But now I have, in my life, I have purpose. I have changed. I want to be a really kind person. I want to be a really helpful, loving person. And just literally talking, letting people around you know that this is a change that you've made. Because I can know otherwise I could feel very, you could feel really boxed in. If you don't advocate for yourself, let other people know, hey, this is a change that is going on in me. I may not be perfect all the time, yeah. but this is really the person I want to be now. Yeah. yeah, wow. Yeah, that's beautiful. Not just the apology, but also stating how you have seen your own growth. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Like letting people know. Yeah, that's really good. Um, then another question that came up, um, and that was on the one that we talked about um, Let's see, last week you were tired and I have called you Mighty Conqueror. And last week we talked about identity versus performance. And we're not going to re-go over these things, so go ahead and look online. Um, you can find us on YouTube. Um, we also talked about disappointment and how that will wear us out. And someone had asked a question, um, how do we deal with disappointment when we have been believing for something? This person has belie been believing for a financial provision. And they're believing the Lord. They're um, trusting in the Lord. And it feels like everything is happening the opposite of what they've been going after and what they believe in. So what do we do with that when we're in this, man, I've been believing this, but it look, what I see is looks like it's the total opposite. Can I answer I'll share one of the things that I talked to this person about, and then you can share after that. I, um, one of the things that I was just doing the other day, again, is recognizing the good things that God is doing. So I was writing in my journal, thank you, Lord, that you're doing this. Thank you, Lord, that you're doing that. Because sometimes we can get so focused on, oh, what I'm believing for, that we forget what God is doing in the now and in the moment. So that's one of the things that I do. I think part of the process is when God speaks to us, we have to find out, are we hearing what we want to hear, or are we hearing what God is saying? And there's two different things sometimes. Um, we, want, we want certain answers, and we're looking the way the answers that we are expecting them. And part of the process is when we get disappointed by God or something like that is because we have an expectation of certain things being this way, and, um, and we don't really like the hard road. And part of the process is just when uh, God, uh, sometimes what we understand as God's timing is not God's timing. So um, when God gives you a prophetic word, you think this is all going to happen in the next three weeks or three years, and it takes actually 30 years. Mm. You know, when G uh, God said to you, uh, them, you know, you're going to enter the promised land, it's going to take you, you know, and it took him 40 years. Yeah. And so there's times where we have to recognize that, first of all, the most important part of that question <laughs> has to answer, do you know that God said it? Mm -hmm. And part of that is what we're really growing into. Do we know how to recognize the voice of God? We, we recognize the voice of God that all of his promises are yes and amen. Th that we know. 
So that means if they are not visible, that means either I got the time wrong or um, I just have to work on my patients. Mm -hmm. Those are the only two options. And you're going to see that as you actually, um, if you know that God said it, it's no longer a question of when will it, uh, will it happen, but it, will, it is happening because God said so. And then it's just going to be a time frame. When, when is that going to happen? And part of that process is also is that when God says certain things, they may be, uh, you're the instrument in the process, and you're going to hold sometimes a certain generation because you're actually the voice piece of that generation, but the fruits are going to come in the next generation. And sometimes we don't understand it. Like, uh, you have Abram, you're going to be the father of all nations. He thought he's going to have a ton of kids but yet one kid, mm -hmm. and it was for the future generation. So sometimes prophetic words, and we have to learn to understand prophetic words, what is God actually saying, and what is not I'm interpreting. Mm -hmm. So I hope that answers that. Yeah. yeah, I think expectation is huge, because sometimes we really think it's going to be a certain way. God did say it. We just had our hopes in, um, we yeah interpreted it a different way, because we had our hopes set in something, but actually he knew what he was doing, and we heard it correctly, but maybe we didn't interpret it right, that it's actually going to be something different than what we thought. Yeah, and, uh, and if we just look at our own lives here in our uh, World Life Center, you know, uh, we've been here, I've been here 18 years, and some of you have been here longer. The church has experienced, um, has been actually alive for about 41 years now. And the reality is, is what God is going to do with the church is everybody who has been apart for 40 years was maintaining what God was doing for the appointed time. And then it's going to explode. So sometimes that's the process. And so everybody who has been here for the 40 years, they thought, well, nothing was happening, nothing is happening, nothing is happening. But now it will. And I feel like that's an important part to recognize that, yeah, I've been waiting for 18 years for many good things to happen, you know. And we have a choice. Are we going to give up? Or are we going to say, okay, God, I'm going to still, yeah, I'm going to be believing and I'm going to die believing. Because everybody can give up, but I will not give up. And there's one thing that in eat at our belief, and that's if we believe a lie about ourselves or we believe lies about God. Because I know that you can have really great stuff spoken over you. You can have really great prophetic words spoken over you. But if you're not believing that that can be true for you, if you're somehow believing, I, God couldn't use me that powerful, I'm, that is not within me. I'm not that great of a leader. I am not that. Um, people don't want to listen to me, um, what I have to say. Then that would literally eat up the truth of a prophetic word. So sometimes, like, there's a deep-seated lie that we're believing about ourselves and our identity. You know, like, we're not going to be influencers. We're not powerful. People wouldn't want to hear what we have to say. Yeah, or even that whole idea of, well, God will provide for them, but maybe not for me. So what do we do with that? Maybe just, just one quick tool. What do we do when we maybe aren't even realizing that we're believing a lie or we don't know where the lie is? Ask him. Yeah. If you sit down quietly and still your spirit and you say, Holy Spirit, is there a lie I'm believing? He will show it to your heart. And then to be really simple, it can be a whole like long process. Or you can say, okay, but Holy Spirit, what is the truth? And literally write it down and don't say, well, that's just me making up yeah. stuff. <laughs> that's just me wishing, hopeful, wishful thinking. But really say that was God yeah. speaking the truth to me. It's good. It's good. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks, guys, for answering those. And everybody that had questions, and again, send them in as they come. Um, anything else? Otherwise, we're going to move on. Okay. So we're going to move on to tonight's. Um, the line that we're talking about tonight is, you were abandoned, and I have called you my treasure, for I have pursued you. And this comes out of um, Luke 15, where it talks about the parable of the lost coin, and there's also the parable of the lost sheep and um, the um, good father. And I just want to remind us, too, as as we walk into this, I just was thinking about these parables, um, and we talked before a few weeks ago about the new wineskins and this revelation of God's grace and God's goodness and how God is um, changing our mindset of him as a father, that he is a good dad, because sometimes we can... Um, 
when we read these uh, parables, we can overlook the fact that when things were found, there was rejoicing. There was, in the parable of the last coin, the house was totally cleaned. Everything was moved to find this, and there was such rejoicing. The lost sheep, the shepherd actually went out and pursued and found. What he did not do was complain to the other sheep, say how horrible that sheep was, that they ran away. No, this is a good shepherd, a good dad. He's pursuing, and he's doing it in joy, and there was such rejoicing when that lost thing was found. And so I want us to keep that in mind, even as we're processing this, that this is, God is so much better even than we realize. No matter what revelation we have of God, he's even better than we realize that he is. So yeah, as we talk about this, let's keep that in our minds. Thanks, Lord. Yeah, he is not an angry God. He's not a punisher. I was reading too in James um, 1 verse 5, and this is so beautiful. It talks about if anybody lacks wisdom, let them ask. But then it says, God will not see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you over your failures, but he will overwhelm your failures with his generous grace. And I think, man, if we get nothing out, uh, else out of tonight, and we're going to get a ton out of it, if we just have that reminder that God is so good, he wants to overwhelm you in his pursuit of you with his goodness and his grace. So yay, thanks Lord. Yeah. So let's talk about that. You were abandoned and I have called you my treasure for I have pursued you. So I have some questions here, but anything that you guys just want to bring out as we start? Well, first of all, it starts, if you're just talking about that sentence, the sentence starts out with the problem of being or feeling abandoned. So that's like, what does that mean when we're like abandoned? And um, I know something we've been talking about a lot lately is that it's such a fatherless um, culture in America right now. Um, one out of every four families do not even have a father physically present, let alone all the families who have a father present, but not emotionally present. You're, you're there, but he's maybe not knowing how to love his family well. But that's like such a big thing of people feeling like, because abandonment, what does that mean? Basically, we can feel abandoned any time we had a need and we needed somebody to come through for us, but they didn't. And that leaves us hurt, whether we knew it or not. Um, we were just left feeling hurt. And it's at that moment where we can start feeling like, I'm not valuable enough for that person to come through and meet my needs. And to not have, like I was, um, Kelly Clarkson, for example, everybody, you know Kelly Clarkson, right? She, her dad left her family when she was six years old. He never knew how to love them well and left. But she's like one of those people who says, you know what, I bring other people into my life to help me fix those broken pieces in my heart because it leaves wounds and scars when we feel abandoned. We can never say, oh, it's okay, it doesn't matter that my mom wasn't there, my dad wasn't there, that my brothers and sisters weren't there for me. It hurt. And just the fact that we can recognize that would be the first step. That's say, the first wow, step. yeah, I'm actually feeling this. Something's going on in the inside that doesn't feel right, and this sounds really familiar. Yeah, and coming and asking for help, that's really good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think the, the way I read the... The prophetic word was, uh, there's a twofold meaning on each and every one of them. Uh, one of us is, um, it says, you were abandoned and I have called you my treasure. And I think it goes church-wise uh, of many people that have been here and they have walked away. They have not been. And uh, those who are staying are feeling abandoned, feel betrayed by them. And I feel like the prophetic word speaks in that realm. But it also speaks on the personal realm in your relationships. Uh, so God is, is doing two things. He's saying as a, as, a, as a family, as a tribe, as a house, you have been, you feel abandoned. You feel like people who once were supporting you are no longer supporting you. And on the other side, you have in your relationships, it was either your job or fa in your personal family or in your friendships and whatever else you've had, you also feel that, uh, that uh, abandonment. And I want to say almost that betrayal of the expectation they're going to be here and they're not. And I find that that's the important part that God says uh, in this particular word. He says, you were abandoned, but now he comes with the, rest uh, the restoration yeah. 
power where he says, but I called you my treasure. And again, that goes church-wide, where God, uh, the prophetic word that he gave us, that uh, stay here, the riders are coming, mm -hmm. don't move, because the enemy wants to make that sure that you're not here, but you're my treasure, and I want you to know that you are a treasure. And treasure is something valuable, something that is so valuable that you not just call it something, but you call it, this is my treasure, something that uh, I, I will fight for, something that I find value in. And he doesn't just do that as a house a word life center, but he also does it for you individually. That this is the season where he's going to show each and every person that you're so valuable, that you are really his treasure. The Bible talks about that we're the apple of his eye. <laughs> and that this uh, is very uh, imp uh, important because he says, for I have pursued you. And many of us don't understand what pursuing actually means uh, because uh, pursuing something becomes annoying, becomes like you want to... Uh, it's not actually sometimes a positive because pursuing is you have an agenda. Uh, you want something from me. What did you want? Or what do I have to do for you? But God says, I'm pursuing you because you're a treasure, because I want to just be in your, with you, look at you, and celebrate you. And I find that we have a hard time that God just wants to be with us. We always feel like God wants to do something, give us, an, uh, give us a job, give us some assignment. <laughs> And God says, I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. That's why he uh, came and gave himself a name in the garden. He just wanted to be with Adam and Eve. And so it's important to understand when we read that, that that actually is the double meaning of those words. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that pursuit. Um, what does that look like for people maybe that don't know at all or some of us that are just, sometimes we think uh, um, encounters with the Lord are always God pursuing us, but sometimes we have this picture of it needs to be this grand vision or this, you know, hoo-ha moment, but there are little things and big things and all in between, and they're all um, so powerful when God is pursuing us. So can you just give us a couple examples of stories from your life where God has pursued you, where you've recognized, oh, that's the pursuit of the Lord over my life? Um, I have, let's see, over my life, when I was younger, it would just come in like quiet times in nature. Like I would love to like sit in a tree or kind of get away um, and be in nature. In nature, I really feel connected to God, like immediately, automatically, like miraculously. I love it being in the woods, like being in a wood kind of place. Um, so that was kind of like a place where I knew if I would go there, I would just feel God's nearness. And then um, more recently, um, since that one time we went to the Randy Clark conference and I really had a very powerful encounter with the Lord since then, if I just press into God's goodness, I actually feel the weight of his glory. And that's like a tangible way, just like this between me and him. Not everybody feels that same way, but that's just something I feel when I just really press into the presence of God. Um, and still my heart, it has a lot to do with stilling my heart. <laughs> and I remember when we went to that conference and Randy Clark was leading us into a really powerful encounter. It might have been an hour that we were just there together in the stadium longing for God. Like nothing else happening, but just saying, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. We want you Holy Spirit. Just like stilling our hearts and stirring up our hunger for God for a very long time. And that's when I really kind of learned that my connection with God when um, it has a lot to do with me being still and having a hunger for it. Because when I'm like so busy and I'm just running, 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 he's pursuing me, he loves me, but I have to sit still long enough to connect with him. I, I think the pursuit, the way I, and it's just a different angle. I, I agree with everything she's saying, but there's uh, so many angles. But I think one of the angle is, is that he interrupts your day. Like uh, when I'm running, suddenly God just starts speaking. And it's funny because he says, I will, uh, um, I will be with you always. So that means if you go jogging, he's going to be with you. He doesn't go, I'll wait on the couch until you come back. 
but he actually is jogging with you and he starts whispering things in your ear. When you're uh, taking a shower, he's actually taking a shower with you, he's actually talking to you. When you're driving, uh, there's so many things you're doing. He is actually connecting with you on a regular basis. God is always talking. And I think the pursuit in that is really um, phenomenal because you're looking at a God that wants connection, wants to have this conversation with you, wants to have that one-on-one -on -one with you. And so many times he just wakes me up. He goes, okay, it's time. It's like how awesome it is, you know, God's waking you up. That's him pursuing you. And, of course, some of us, we don't like to be woken up by God. You know, it's like, okay, you know what, well, that's enough now. <laughs> but I, I really feel like it's, it's interesting when you really focus on God, you can see how much he is pursuing you, how much he's actually interested in you, how much he actually wants to have that relationship with you. And I feel that's a pursuit that if we are not recognizing, we think it's just, oh, whatever, you know. But there is so many times. And again, it just was, it, it, again, back to the thing, one thing we're learning so much last year and this year is what does the voice of God sound like? Yeah. If we don't know what God sounds like, we are never going to recognize his pursuit. Yeah. But if we do know, recognize his voice, then we will recognize his pursuit. Yeah, yeah that's so good. Um, I was just thinking about in my own life, um, different ways that he has pursued my heart. And I have lots of stories, but um, one of them was um, my husband had lost his job and I was teaching, making very minimal amount of money teaching at a little Christian school. And um, I had just been getting in this process of, um, Lord, I don't want to just um, look at everything and, and go for the um, least and scratch by. And so one of the things that the Lord had just really been kind of dealing with me on was um, I was buying like the cheapest laundry soap, like the, the cheapest. And I had just, um, before he had lost his job, I was like, you know what, Lord, I'm actually just going to trust you. And I'm just going to buy the one that I actually like. It wasn't that we couldn't afford it. It just was that I had this, like, I was so afraid to spend any money at all. Well, anyway, then after my husband lost his job, um, of course, I went back to buying the, um, the least expensive. But I just had this, like, oh, man, Lord, I felt like I was just starting to get there where I could trust you, you know, with um, not not worrying about spending money. I hope this is making sense what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, I, I was, I think I was at conferences and uh, we lived in the Midwest and so we didn't lock our cars over there. So my car doors were open. And anyway, I come out of um, finishing up conferences and I open up the car door and there was the laundry soap that I had really wanted, the kind that I had liked, um, it, in my car. And I sat in my car and of course I'm crying and I just heard the Lord say, Sandy, not only will I provide the things that you need, but I am the God who provides the things that you want. And it was just a, just, you know, it was like maybe $3.50 back then, but it was this little love touch from the Lord. I am pursuing your heart, Sandra. And so it doesn't have to always be, you know, this big grand thing or this whisper or, you know, you feel the tangible presence of the Lord walk into the room. Sometimes it's laundry soap that God is saying, I'm actually changing your mindset. I'm, I'm wooing your heart and I'm healing your heart through a gift like that. So yeah, so beautiful. Um, thanks, Lord. Another one was um, just not that long ago, I was driving down the road and I was just like, oh man, you know, a lot of stuff's been going on, Lord, and I just need some, just everything in my heart is just feeling a little bit messy. And I look up, I'm driving, and I see this huge road construction sign that says, restoration in progress, restoration in progress. And it just was so like, oh yes, Jesus, that's what you're doing here, that's what you're doing in my life, thank you, Lord. And again, just him wooing me through these very natural things. Um, one more, one day, um, I, this was years ago, I was um, in our apartment just feeling so sad and lonely because we had moved here and I didn't know a lot of people yet. And we're now in this, what feels very city-like to me. And I grew up with, um, yeah, animals and deer and all that stuff. So anyway, I just was like, oh man, Lord, I'm walking up the stairs. I just, I just would like to know that just something from you. And I get to the top of the stairs and I look out the window and there's this whole family of deer. And I thought, oh Lord. And it just was this sweet little like, yeah. Sandy, I know the things that matter to you. And just like that pursuit too. Sometimes it's so personal that if you, 
if you didn't really know the person, you would think it's no big deal. Somebody else could look out. There's lots of windows that were facing the little woods there. But to me, I knew that that was the Lord pursuing my heart and saying, I see you. I hear you. I love you like crazy. I'm pursuing you. You are my treasure, whether you feel like it or not, you are. So, yeah, thanks, Lord. Yeah, I'm sure all of you guys have stories like that. I really want to encourage you. Write them down. Bring them out. Share them with somebody. Sometimes it just takes sharing that story to really bring up the, oh, man, yeah, God loves me that much. That's what he's doing in my life. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Lord. Okay, I want to transition just quickly into how has he pursued us as a corporate body? Because we want to go from he's pursuing us as individuals. He also, a lot of us have stories, probably all of us, of stories of how he's pursuing our families and our family lines. That would be another thing we could go into. But how is he pursuing us as a church and as a corporate body? One of the things I know that his pursuit right now really is this healing, healing our hearts from the past season. We can't bring in all the stuff from the past as we move forward. So that's one thing that you both brought up today. But any other areas you see that God is pursuing us as a church as a um as his body yeah I, I believe a big part of that is just uh, the prophetic words that he sp says because in amos it talks about that and i feel like the prophetic words that he does say and give and the assurances that he gives and the consistent um you know uh, words that he gives and i think the other thing that he does and i think we have not probably recognized that is that everybody who's here is part of god's pursuit mm. And I don't mean it the way you think it, but I mean it that because you're here, God is showing that he's pursuing something. Mm -hmm. Because you wouldn't, you're, we are all necessary for God to pursue something here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you look at, he br brings uh, Jake and Sandy from Minnesota yeah. all the way here because he's pursuing something here. So he's yeah, bringing right. the tools, he's bringing the people, he's bringing the finances, he's yeah. bringing people because he's pursuing somebody so uh, a father pursues his kids right or a father uh, does whatever he can to uh, give success to a certain area in the in his family and i find that god is pursuing us by giving gifts people mm, finances and everything is to us so yeah. each and every one of you is a gift of yeah. god pursuing each and every one of us here. So you are part of the gift. Does that make sense what oh, I'm saying? Yeah, let's stop there for just a moment. That might be something that you want to write down. I am a gift from God to this body. I am actually part of what he is pursuing in this area. Yeah, wow, that's powerful. Thank you. And I find that once we Id uh, identify with that truth, there's a shift that happens yeah. that we are part of the pursuit. Mm. And that no longer makes us just Joe Blow here. Yeah. That makes us very intentionally placed yeah. people. Very intentional with amazing gifts and talents. We're no longer just coming, but we are here planted to grow and to till the soil and to make a difference. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's really good. That's a huge takeaway right there. And I just want to encourage us, too. I know a lot of us have um, just different situations, different people in our lives, in our families, maybe, you know, people at work or wherever it is. I want to encourage you, just like God is pursuing your heart, he is pursuing their hearts. So, yeah, just keep that reminder as well. Wow, God is pursuing me because he loves me like crazy. God is pursuing my family. God is pursuing the people in Stratford. God is pursuing all of South Jersey. Yeah, and it just keeps going on. Wow, thanks, Jesus. Anything else you guys want to add? Um, just to, like, add to that, not really say anything new, but it really is amazing how when he pursues us individually, then we begin to pursue, become the pursuer for other people. Because there's a lot of people in my life who encourage me. God used them very directly to pursue me. Um, people that he put in my life to encourage me. You guys, I tell you, ever since I've started, ever since I came to this house, to this church, something in me just felt like so at home and so lit up for what God is doing. And so God has used each one of you to pursue what the calling and the passion in my heart for God. And it kind of becomes this, we become part of 
the pursuit of God for each other as we keep on like putting um, wood on the fire for each other and stirring up like that passion um, in each other's hearts. So it just becomes this continuous kind of pursuit. (laughs) Yeah, that's good. And that's really important too about stepping out because I was thinking even about the person that put the laundry soap in my car. If God used them to pursue my heart, but if they hadn't listened or they hadn't um, been able to recognize the voice of the Lord, and I actually had... um, I had an inkling of who the person was, so I just asked them straight out, and they said they actually had it for like two weeks, and they had felt like the Lord had said two weeks ago to put it in my car, but they just kept, oh, I don't know, is she going to think it's weird? So just stepping out and pursuing each other, that's so beautiful. Like, did you ever feel like quitting something? Like, did you ever start doing something new, and you just felt like, I'm just doing so lousy at this, I want to quit. But somebody else came along and said, no, I see this is in you. Do not quit this. It might feel rough at the beginning. You might have a lot to learn, but do not quit this. I remember being like 13-year-old kid. Do you remember those overhead? I don't know if any of you remember being in church when we still had the songs on overheads. Um, And I was that, it was like a church of like 800. And I was that little kid up front doing the overhead words. Well, I'm a blue, so I'm all like hard on myself. I almost had a nervous breakdown. As a kid, because they, they did all the songs, and the song leader would switch songs, and i have to go in the box and find the song. And then the, the um, pastor would preach the points, and I had to put the paper down after each point. And sometimes I would stop paying attention, and I'd forget to put the point down. And the church of 800 people are like, I just, I thought this was like, I was such a terrible person at this. But this one gentleman, I mean, I was crushed every time I made a mistake. But there was this one gentleman that after church would say, just a nice, I can't remember exactly what he would say, but he would just be, had, he had an encouraging spirit. He had a Barnabas spirit, and he would just encourage me. And I'd be like, okay, I won't quit and get up, but man, this feels like really embarrassing. <laughs> but when we speak into each other's life, that encouragement spirit, and say, no, God's pursuing you. God really loves you. And we just keep that fire going. And part of pursuing, too, is um, your gift at times is a pursuit to somebody. Mm -hmm. And so let's say if you have a gift of teaching, um, you're you're pursuing, because this is the deal. God is working on our free will constantly. And so you are the goodness of God to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you're showing up, in, in a group of people, when you're showing up at work, you are becoming God's goodness. You're becoming God's pursuit to somebody. Mm-hmm. When you see yourself, there's a whole new identity in that. Yeah. You're not just a coworker. You're not just a, a family member. You're somebody's pursuit. Does that make sense? God is working on a free will. So if you have a, a person that is, uh, needs something and you're meeting them, and you're giving them money, or you're giving them wisdom, or you're giving them a hug, or you're giving them a smile, uh, because you did that, they are finding God is pursuing me. And I find that, that that's a really valuable point because we dismiss that so much. We dismiss that our actions are really not that important to other people, but your actions are the pursuit of God to that person. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That was what the um, other piece that I had here is how do we or maybe what does that look like as we pursue others? Because one of the pieces that we always want to um, just keep in mind as well is we're not pursuing to get something. We're pursuing because we are love, because that's who God is. God says, um, it says anything is First Corinthians, follow the way of love. That's what we're doing. We're pursuing people because God loves them, and we're pursuing people because we love them because God loves us and God loves them, we love them. And I was just thinking of just a few of the different areas. Um, It's, again, that mindset shift of we're actually pursuing instead of waiting for people to come to us. We're going out into the community. We're going into the borough. We're taking living art into the restaurant. We're going to, um, you know, maybe we're standing in line at the bank or at the grocery store and we're talking to the clerk and we're pursuing people consistently with the love of God. It may just be a smile or a hug 
hug, and that's what we're going to get to later in this word, that a hug can change everything. One look in the eye um, can change a person from the inside out because it's actually Jesus doing that through us. Um, what else did I write down? The prayer walk. When you go on the prayer walk, that right there is so intentional that we're pursuing our community consistently. Um, have it in business. We're pursuing people in the business um, world. Prophetic words, all of those things. We're pursuing people with the love of God. It's me. Sorry, it was me at that. Oh, no, yeah. I thought it was. It doesn't matter. Go ahead. <laughs> we're making noise up here. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, I just wanted to process that a little bit. If you guys have anything to add about pursuing, and it could even be in our families. I think that's one where sometimes it feels more difficult because sometimes it feels easier to pursue somebody that you don't know because it feels maybe like it's lower risk. I mean, it depends on the person. Sometimes it feels high risk because we don't know the people. But sometimes when there's... Um, things happening in a relational setting and we don't know how to pursue because it feels awkward maybe that would be something that we could just talk about a little bit what do, what do we do when we know we want to pursue but we're just not sure yeah say this feels awkward okay, that's good, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> this feels awkward to me i don't know how to help you right now but i would love to just be able to um Bless to like help you some way. If there's some way I could encourage you, if there's some way I could listen, is there some way I could just be helpful to you? Or just be transparent about your needs. You know, mm -hmm. what do, what do I need right now? Especially we're walking through temperaments. <clears throat> My temperament. I'm not sure what your temperament is, but I don't even know how to communicate to your temperament. How can I do this in a way that it actually becomes meaningful? Yeah. Yeah, one of the first, one of the things I learned is to embrace awkwardness. When a situation feels awkward, don't try to fight it or act like it's not, but actually like embrace the awkwardness of it because you can actually celebrate that you're doing something that's new and that's really good. You're stepping out of your comfort zone and be like, okay, you know, this was really awkward, but I want to connect with you. <laughs> And that's part of, like, in sports, that's what I always, you know, I used to play racquetball, never played it before, but you just do it, and you look like a spider in there, but, and everybody laughs at you, but you know what? I'm enjoying it, it doesn't matter, and in the end, I'll win, <laughs> you know, and, and that's the point, you know, because, but it doesn't matter. Um, the other thing I wanted to say about the word pursuit, if we just have a couple of minutes, is that... Um, Pursuing is, for example, as well, and I think we have to open our, uh, our, our eyes and ears to this part, is that uh, what we're doing, for example, in the borough, we're pursuing people by trying to become influencers, and by the way we love one another, but the way we also have ideas, mm -hmm. we have godly ideas, we have godly mindsets, and that influence, we're pursuing the world, because God so loved the world, mm -hmm. so we're pursuing the world with God's love. So the seven mountains, we're pursuing economy, we're pursuing uh, the uh, teaching, we're pursuing art, we're pursuing uh, finance, we're pursuing to show them how God brings, how God wants to do it, right? Mm -hmm. That is a pursuit if you do politics. You're, you're not getting into politics because you like politics, maybe you do, but the point is I'm doing it because I'm pursuing the world just like Jesus pursued mm -hmm. the world. That's and that's what we're doing. So. The pursuit is never a point of it'll give me something to gain, but the pursuit is always to give something that the kingdom of God is going to gain. Heaven is bringing, being brought to earth. We're replicating what heaven is doing. We're bringing it on earth. And that's what pursuing actually means because God so loved the world, and we are the ones now he left to love the world so everybody can yeah, see him. Yeah, that's good. yeah, thanks, Lord. Anything else you want to add? Being pursued by God and becoming a pursuer, partnering with pers pursuing others with God, has got to be one of the most, it's got to be the most exciting things that totally like lights up our lives as Christians. Because that's what makes this being a Christ follower not like a list, but it makes it like, wow, that word pursuit is so full of like we're here we're like gonna talk about this for hours but it makes it so full of fire and passion and adventure yeah. 
because you're always like, how can I um, pursue the kingdom wherever I am? How can I bring that pursuit of God? Because he is constantly pursuing us like crazy, like we cannot even imagine. Yeah. Yeah, and what an honor that is that God wants to pursue people through us. That's so beautiful. Yeah. And, and the thing is, too, is that any one of you who has been ever pursued, it feels good. You know, in a healthy way. Uh, any one of you who has been pursued in a healthy way, it never felt like awkward. It felt like inviting. You felt valued. You felt special. You felt important. And that's how everybody else is going to feel when you pursue them. And it's letting your guard down. Mm -hmm letting your defenses down, letting all your preconceived ideas down, letting all your judgment down, and say, I will pursue people. Because that's what God does. God so loved the world, his pursuit was love, and that's how we do it the same way. And again, just recognizing, sometimes when you're first learning to step out, it might feel a little bit awkward, but it's okay to embrace the awkwardness. I love that. I'm going to totally do that even more than I already am. Thanks, Jesus. Embracing the awkwardness. There we go. <laughs> All right. Do you want to just close us off? Maybe declare a beautiful thing from the Lord over us and pray. Yes. Thanks, Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> so, God, I just, um, yeah, I just declare that each one of our hearts right now would just actually receive your pursuing heart, God. You love to pursue. It's who you are. And so right now, we, got, we give you permission to pursue us, and we give you permission to pursue others through us. That would feel like fire um, through our bones, God, that it would be come and just come and just light us up, God. And the times that it feels awkward and the times we feel unsure how to do it, that you would just come in and just let us smile, let us laugh, and let us ask questions. Let us be full of joy as we're learning how to pursue and how to be pursued in Jesus name. Amen. Amen.